Hi, I'm Stephanie Hoover, and I'm a nonfiction author specializing in history, crime, folklore, and the 19th century spiritualism movement. The excerpt I'm going to be reading you today, actually three, are entries from my book, Spiritualism and the Supernatural, an entertaining encyclopedia for believers and skeptics alike. The first entry I'd like to read you is Spiritualism. Man has long entertained the possibility of immortality, and many religions believe man possesses an eternal soul or spirit. The unique proposition visited upon the world by spiritualism was the belief that living persons could communicate with these souls or spirits of the deceased. Unlike other religious movements, there's a precise date for spiritualism's inception, March 31st, 1848. This is the day the Fox sisters convinced their credulous mother that they could, through rapping, converse with the spirit living in their upstate New York cottage. The alacrity with which spiritualism spread is astounding, even by modern standards. A prodigious cadre of spiritualist mediums toured the country in the 1850s. By the 1860s, there were more than 300 mediums in the city of Philadelphia alone. England caught the fever in the 1870s. As in America, highly educated men and women figured prominently among spiritualism's devotees. As with any trend, more interest means greater scrutiny. From its earliest days, exposés of famous spiritualist mediums appeared regularly in newspapers across the nation. These exposures did little to dampen the enthusiasm of spiritualism's fiercest followers. An 1891 survey reported that America had 45,030 self-identified spiritualists and 334 spiritualist churches. These numbers fell as the 20th century dawned, although there was a brief resurgence during the First World War. In 2014, the Pew Research Center surveyed 35,000 individuals to determine their religious affiliation. Less than one-third of one percent of respondents, about a hundred people, named spiritualism as their self-identified faith. The second entry I'd like to read you is a classic, Haunted House. By the turn of the 20th century, opinion writers were already predicting the extinction of the haunted house era. Modern man was simply too savvy to fall for the superstitions of his less worldly ancestors, they said. Besides, even if people wanted to perpetrate this baseless belief, the ghost houses of the past were either already destroyed or crumbling into decay. There were no haunted houses left to fear. It takes only a brief stroll through movie titles and bestseller lists to prove how wrong these pundits of the past truly were. Haunted houses maintain a firm grasp on our imaginations, one that likely won't loosen anytime soon. In 2015, a poll was conducted of American adults asking about their supernatural experiences. 18% reported seeing a ghost. 29% believed they had been in communication with a deceased friend or loved one. These findings are supported by Americans' choices of hobbies and interests. Every year, usually around Halloween, Dozens of publications, including respected titles such as National Geographic, publish lists of the most haunted places in the nation. Millions of people watch television shows featuring paranormal experts on the hunt for ghosts. Skeptics say haunted houses are nothing more than ordinary structures impregnated with false and frightening impressions. Willful deceit perpetrated against the highly credulous. Cosmopathic people, and you'll have to read my encyclopedia to find out what that means, have no doubt that haunted houses exist and wish nothing more than to communicate with their spiritual tenants. Until one side provides irreversible proof of its position, the debate over and fascination with 
haunted houses will likely survive. The final entry I'm going to read you is my favorite entry from the entire book. It is the entry for Lucifer. Lucifer has endured perhaps the worst public relations campaign in paranormal history. Today, his name is synonymous with evil. Portrayals of Lucifer in fictional works usually allege a relationship or symbiosis with Satan. In actuality, the evidence for this characterization is sorely lacking. Lucifer is mentioned only once in the King James Bible in chapter 14, verse 12 of the book of Isaiah. It reads, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? While Lucifer's detractors take this to mean that he was ejected from heaven for his wicked acts, linguists take another view. The Hebrew translation of this verse substitutes the word Hillel for Lucifer. Hillel means bright star, which leads many scholars to suspect that this verse is actually referencing the planet Venus. It was then known as the morning star. It appears that the one statement damning Lucifer to an eternity of bad press is simply poetic praise of a star at sunrise. Those are my excerpts from my book, Spiritualism and the Supernatural, an entertaining encyclopedia for believers and skeptics alike. If you'd like to purchase a signed copy of this book, visit stephaniehoover.com. Thanks for listening and be well.